So welcome uh, back to our Building Dreams Drive. My name is Chris Biocchi, the Senior Vice President at Habitat Orange County, and I am joined here today by Charles Antis from Antis Roofing and Wing Lamb from Wahoo's Fish Tacos. And we're going to spend some time today talking about um, corporate social responsibility, about uh, ways companies can get involved, and, and we want to talk a little bit about Charles' story with Habitat as well. So I'll, I'll start it off maybe with a question to Wing. You know, why do you think it's important for businesses and organizations to get involved in their broader community? Well, why should they do that? It's not why they should, it's the right thing to do. I mean, as we thrive in the community, basically our customers are the people that live in the communities that we serve. So why not find ways to give back and you know, volunteer, whatever it is, the capacity that you're able to do, find a way to basically give back to the people that make your business successful. I like that. Charles, same question to you. Why should business leaders you know, kind of get out of their comfort zone and, and get involved out there? Well, it's the right thing to do, 50%. But the other 50% is if you want to be heard and you want to be noticed and you want to be around the next 10 years, then you better get involved and people can associate why you exist with why they exist. They can have that alignment, that reptilian brain alignment. Now, recently, I know both of your companies have been really involved with the community uh, in, in doing the love drops and working with Habitat, all sorts of things. What have you noticed? You know, what's changed given the quarantine, given the pandemic? You know, how, how has that uh, changed how you look at things or how you've been involved in the community? I would say right out of the top is the fact that since none of the events, including the builds, are not as uh, highly attended as they used to be, because it's kind of fun to do a Zoom event once in a while, but the idea of getting dressed up just to watch other people on the phone is really not that exciting you now. So basically, Habitat gives you a great platform because you're hands-on. There's really no glamour in being on top of a roof or on the side of a building and helping build the houses. But it's the fact that you are making a difference. So the little things right now is what's, you know, the only outlet that we have. So the fact that, you know, probably at least a year before we see any major live events of any sort, this is a great way to get involved. And Habitat is one of the few things besides the food banks that allows you to hands-on touch and you know and support the community that you're in agreed yeah charles how about you what have you noticed in this this past year has been so challenging for so many people but you've been still been very public about getting involved and and, and supporting the causes that are close to you you know what, what have you seen out there in, in in the wide world i think there's a, a I was always guilty of something that's called confetti philanthropy. You know, you really need to stay within your lane. Like we keep family safe and dry. So that's why we donate the roofs to Habitat. That's easy to see, but it's, it's easy for me to get excited about other causes. Well, that does, that it does create brand confusion. But this last year, like I've always had this uh, uh, relationship with Wing. Well, Wing will call me on something. He knows what I'm going to say. He knows I'm going to say, oh, okay. You know, he knows that I'm, I'm like him. He did the same thing. And so it's not, and, but right now that really works more than ever because, because people have new fears. You know, we still donate the Habitat roofs, as you know, and, but when, when the builds were shut down initially, you know, we needed something else to do, to be relevant. So our people felt purpose with why they were at work that day. And that's when we started delivering food also with Second Harvest. And that's when we started doing blood drives here. You know, Wing was here yesterday with another blood drive. You've been here. And, and, and that's when we started doing the love drop because there was now, there was a new pain there were people that were protect, protecting us that needed support and we needed to build a bridge to that. And so I think that what I learned is, is you just can't give too much. You know, there was a year, a couple of years ago that, that um, our projections on giving were almost a million dollars and our sales were down 20% and we lost money or scratched money that year. And we gave away $800,000 and, and it looked foolish. In fact, there probably were some people internally that, questioned it. But looking back now, I think we made the best investment. I think our brand shows it. I think our culture shows it. I think our, our, our product shows it. And I watched Wing this last year do the same thing. When all the restaurants were, were head in the sand out of sometimes that they didn't know what else to do, Wing was like, oh my God, you need food? Yes. 
And then he found a way that, hey, and that's when Wing and I got involved in the, in the love drop, when he got me involved. Initially, he was like, hey, I can keep four more restaurants open. And that is a really cool thing if you think about it. This is like business, nonprofits, people with new pains moving together and building something that that is is solving a community problem and that's what happens when you start getting involved with causes that you have real attachment to wing has attachment to a lot more than normal i have attachment to a lot more than normal because empathy is like a muscle and it's like we're doing bench press every day i mean I'm not as strong as I used to be. I can't bench press very much. Not that I was ever that strong, but oh. but I I my empathy bench pressing uh, uh, whatever the, my chest can be, can emp my empathy chest can bench press 500 pounds, and it is, and it's a cool thing. And when it happens, we're happier. When that happens, we're better leaders. I'm positive, no matter what happens. Most of the time, <laughs> I had to throw that last one in. And I've watched Wing. I, I, I'm going to stop talking in a second here. But I've watched Wing when, when people are scared and they do what people do. They make little comments. And not that that's the big thing, but that whenever something comes less than seeing the highest selves of everyone around, Wing, I don't think it's even, I don't think he even notices it. He just subconsciously adapts and pushes the conversation to noticing what's whole. And that is a cool talent. That's cool. That's what happens when you get to hang around nonprofits that you're really aligned with and hanging around people that you really trust, that you know are there to make it better for everyone. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm not going to ask you how much you could bench press. I feel like you were leading me down that path. I'm not going to fall for that, Charles. I haven't done it in too long to know. <laughs> Wig, let me, let me ask you a question. Uh, how, how would you recommend or how would you suggest somebody get started in philanthropy, either you know, getting involved in the broader community, getting involved, like Charles said, with those causes that speak to you? Sometimes people are, are, don't know how to take that first step. So what, what advice would you have for people who might, might be uh, unsure about how to jump in? Well, at the end of the day, I mean, all nonprofits, just by definition, they're doing something great in the community that they're in. So you just decide what's in, like, what makes you comfortable, right? Are you comfortable being around, I call it a bunch of mucky mucks, or are you more comfortable being around your neighbors, right? So figure out like the lane that you like to be in. So, you know, go to your churches, go to your different, I call it uh, local business groups, like the Rotary Club, the Lions Club, whatever organization you you know, or the trade that you happen to be in. Like Charles is very active in the roofing community. So figure out like the, the, the business that you're in. But at the same time, you know, if you're an accountant, I'm pretty sure the last thing you want to do is hang out with another hundred accountants, right? So look at other things that may complement your business. Because at the end of the day, you know, we all like to do a little bit of business, right? But that's not the main reason. But just kind of like, look at what makes you feel comfortable. You know, hey, I really like, the age group, I really like the religious part, whatever that, you know, the, the business sector that you're in, and then kind of diversify, look at business that complement what you're doing. So together, you get a bunch of business guys together, you can really help a nonprofit out because nonprofits don't necessarily see the business side of the fundraising all the time. They're looking at the fact that they need to raise X, they just don't know how to go about it. So for, you take, if you put your business hat on, you can help them see the, why somebody would want to part with their million dollars to help you out. So if you can find, like I call the perfect person that wants to give you the money and the perfect charity that needs it, that's where things really, you know, kind of come together. So it's not so much self-serving. It is, hey, have a little bit of fun because you're going to spend a lot of time doing this. So you might as well hang out with people that you want to hang out with. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to go to another committee meeting, another gala, another golf tournament, and hang out with a bunch of people that you really don't see eye to eye with. You know, you're not on the same page. And, you know, so when you get a group of guys that you're having fun or you're helping a nonprofit, that's where everything wins. And like I said, whenever, you know, I see people working, you know, in the food banks or on the roof, I see everybody kind of working together. And yeah. nobody's yelling at each other. Everybody just kind of knows what to do. Right? They know what comes after this step, after that step. So that's where things begin to fall into place. You find the place that makes you comfortable and the people that you want to be with. And hopefully there'll be some business down the road from it. But that's not the main reason you get involved. 
right. watch wing though there's also there's a there's a real part though of your heart in the right place like wing has real good intent as do i wing has another talent though that i tease him about like he he knows all these nonprofits and they're his head. And this thing that he's saying is easy for him. It's easier for him. And he has all of these other uh, businesses in his head. And he and he just plug and play sometimes. And 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 we say okay. And so what, the way that'll look is uh, um, I'll be at an event. We're at a love drop. And this is back when things were really looking scary, like nine months, ten months ago. We're at a love drop, and and Wing's got his van there. And, you know, we're dropping all the burritos and the Monster Energy. And all of a sudden, he calls over, like, "Hey, Charlie, come here." You know, and I, I come over, and he looks, and he goes, "Look." And he rolls up the back, and he's got this air fryer there. It's an air fryer, and it, I feel like I'm in like in L.A. 20 years ago, and some guy's selling me a TV out of the back, you know, and he's just hey, off the truck, yeah. tell me, he's telling me how it works, all about it. And I, I don't even know why he's telling me this. I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm still coming out of my shell out of COVID back then. And then, and then I realized what he's saying is, look, I've got a friend and he wants to give these away. And I, and I thought they would be good for some of the nonprofits. And what's funny is we've been given those dryers, those hot air dryers around all summer. And tomorrow we're showing up at Cerrito School District and, and Wing has got secured a, a hot air dryer for every one of those teachers, along with a lot of other stuff. And so it's a really cool thing to get involved. When you get involved with, um, with real people moving the dial, really changing the world, there's people like Wing and magic happens all around it. And by the way, there's people like me too. And there's people like you, we all have our magic and that's what's cool. We're all different. And we work, that's why we work so well together because we're all different. We need all of us. I need, I need the godfather of good. Wings like that old Italian guy's got all those white slips of paper in his pocket and you come in, you tell him something, he makes a couple of noises, he writes down a number and he gives it to you. Except he actually makes the call for you. But, but it's, that's what it's like. When you start doing business this way, it's not transactional for me. It isn't. And I can't explain why it works that way. But business in all in all of our intent is a real exchange of the highest service of exchanging stories and lives where the product is, is better than it's ever been. And the because the intent is more pure than it's ever been. And that's where this guy lives. And when the more I hang around him, the, you know, you are who you hang around. That's why I hang around Wing Lamb. I catch myself sometimes now giving stuff away. I, I start, I don't, I can't, I bought something for myself. I get through my office, I don't have any left and I go home happier. That's what he does. I love that. I love that. And, and you know, it's, it's great because, you know, Wing, you talked about the importance of finding people that you want to spend time with and that'll make you want to do more good. And Charles, you talked about the importance of that culture and those relationships. And that, that, really, that really connects with, what Habitat does, because not only do we build homes, but we build community too, not only a literal community of multiple homes, but we bring people together. That's really, I think, the secret sauce for what Habitat does is bringing people with passion together to solve a problem. Um, you know, staying on that tack for a second, the third thing that Habitat builds, we build homes, we build community, and we build hope. And, and hope is something that I think sometimes uh, doesn't get a lot of play these days, but I, I'd like to ask both of you, uh, you know, what are you hopeful for? What brings hope into your life right now? The hope is finding, like I said, guys like Charles and I, whenever you find another one, like my buddy Luke, the guy with the air fryers, not the dryers, but it's okay. <laughs> Charles is, all, we're all over the map. He's, he's, he was on a roll. I couldn't stop him. Did I say air dryers? You did. I, I, we, we, we got you though. <laughs> got it, Kevin. So the same thing, Luke is like, hey, what do you need? I'm like, you know, we got 80 teachers, you know, tomorrow. And he says, you know what? Let me go dig and see if I can find you 80 air fryers. So I literally, in the middle of the rain yesterday, I was driving to the school, delivered them because if I, tomorrow, if I had the fryers and the food, it wasn't going to fit in my van anyway. <laughs> I literally had it from one end to the other. And the, the principal comes out and go, what in the world? I'm like, hey. <laughs> Just thought a lot of these young, you know, it's a really cool appliance. And the reason it's really cool, not only does it work, right? It's the fact that it's easy to clean. And that's really the beauty of anything that's, you know, good right now. You want to be able to use it, plug and play, I call it, right? <laughs> so stuff like that. So Charles and I are always calling each other and say, hey, you know, what can we do with this? I says, well, let's get it. Because if you don't, it's going to be gone, right? 
So it's like Costco. We get it. We don't know what we're going to do with it yet. <laughs> no way. You know, and Charles will call me and go, hey, what about this? I'm like, hey, that'd be a great you know, thing that we can use it for. So we're very creative, very resourceful. And that's where hope comes in is things just, you know, I call it hope and faith. They kind of go hand in hand. Things happen because you've got to have a little bit of growth, right? And at the end, you, you just, yeah, you, you know, just leave it open. You do that. You've done that. And, 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 and I think that I do that, but I've emulated it from you. And when I, and I, when I'm around you, I, I recognize, oh yeah, that's what we do. We don't know. We just don't say no. We just kind of, you know, and may, hey, maybe somebody's got product. Yeah, we'll find a place for it. Somebody's got this they can donate. Oh, really? Yeah, let's keep talking about it. We don't shut it down. And what happens is the it's more beautiful the next day when you wake up. It's almost like, well, it's even better. The circumstances are even better. But the moment you go, that don't work, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and Wayne never says that. You know, yeah. in fact, what Wing and I said years ago, after we started talking, we had a lot of alignment, you know, he's like, hey, you know, we do it. We can do a lot of this together. And I was and I was being skeptical, which I kept, I act like I'm so positive. And sometimes I'm like bad luck schlep rock, you know, whatever his name was. So I, I'm like saying, well, no, no, you donate a taco. It's like a couple of, I don't need a roof. It's like 20,000. And he would always no, no, it's just just hang on, you know, and and that's kind of like leaving it open all sorts of we've done so many things together. And, and that's really cool that as long as you don't say no, as long as you imagine it possible, then you're, people are going to have time to donate. As long as you imagine it possible, you're going to have money to donate. Imagine as you think it possible, you don't have to work anymore. You can go do what you love. And if you watch me, if you follow me physically or online, I look like I'm having fun. And you know, you just can't fake that part. You just can't fake it. I mean, when I'm stressed, I show it. Wing, people like Wing, my wife, my assistant, Susan DeGrassi, yeah, they know that when I'm a little stressed. But even then, you know, I'm, 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 things are gonna be good in a second. And that is a cool thing when you live in this world because I've lived in that other grinding world where you grind, 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 and you work 90 hours a year. I don't wanna do that. Well said. Well said. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I hope that everyone out there, I hope everyone watching this especially, really takes that to heart that, that we can do amazing things together. We can do seemingly impossible things together. If we, we look for those opportunities, we build those relationships, we, we take those uh, opportunities when they show up. And, and really that's, again, taking it back to Habitat, building affordable housing in one of the least affordable places in the country. That's pretty crazy. Um, but it works, and it only works because we've got people like you on our side, both both Charles and Wing. So uh, we're getting close to the top of our time here. So Charles, let me let me get a little more detailed with you on this one, and 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 just ask the big question. You know, why does the Habitat mission matter to you? You've been a, a champion for us for a long time. You've put literally putting roofs over the heads of our our homeowners. Why? Well, it, the obvious thing is we donate roofs and, and we, we install roofs, we sell roofs, so why not donate to keep people dry? But the real story goes from the first year I started business, from the, one of the first homes that I went to call on when I didn't have money, I was pulled into a room by a little girl where she was, she was showing me a poster on the wall that she was proud of, but I looked down and saw four mattresses with mold and I, I was stuck. And, and, I, and I was frozen in that moment until the mom walked in the room and I saw her face and I said I would donate a roof that I didn't know that I could do. And that's a familiar theme. You know, how can I do that? But I found a way with volunteers and we kept that family in the home. And that was a high five moment. That was a doctor on an airplane moment that changed my life. And over time, I realized it. And so when Habitat called 12 years ago, Sharon Ellis called me and asked if I donated a roof. That was easy to say yes. The second and third and every roof since, it's happened because of what I saw. And what I got to see was I really got to see the family. Um, whether you're on a build in Mongolia, which I've done with Sharon and that family that you're building that home with, that whole home start to finish in a week. When you watch that family that doesn't talk, by, but the third day they wake up and they have emotion like they don't know how to express. 
because of this community that's there to help them not only have a home, but an insulated, warm home that they didn't have experience with. Or you watch here. I remember, you, I think it, you about the time you came here, um, Rosie. I just remember Rosie when Rosie got her keys. And I remember Rosie never said much until she got her keys. And then she gave me the biggest hug and she just started crying. And I felt... I felt like what it must be like for her not being able to have security for her kids living in moldy homes, which is very much the case as we know in Habitat, much like that first home I donated that roof for. So, you know, when I, when I see what Habitat does, you know, cause we just believe like most people that everybody deserves a decent place to live. I don't, I don't like, I don't hang around people that don't believe that. So this is something that's so, reptilian brain with me those that i travel with feel this way and this organization exudes it better than anyone as far as that message of safe home because we have a safe home then these families can thrive and when we look at all of these families we've housed over the last 30 plus years in habitat we see what we see and you could report on this better than me um, because you you actually you're the one telling me these stories but we see kids going to college turning the, the, they're seeing themselves higher than ever possible and, and getting stronger by generation. And that strengthens our community. And so it's an investment in families, but it's a huge investment also in our community. And, and if we really understood it, we would all understand that the resources need to be there for these families. So I, I love Habitat. Habitat is what allowed me to express myself and grow that empathy muscle. And also, as you know, we, we love to talk about uh, the changes and the impact that we can have. And Habitat is who, and the people at Habitat are, are who taught me how we can talk about that to affect real change inside and outside the company and in the community. I love it. I love it. Well, gentlemen, I, I, I really thank both of you for your time today. It's, I know getting, uh, getting both of you on the phone uh, for this much time is, is, a, uh, is a treat. Um, and I wish we it could was, all be- It was a challenge today, but we pulled it off. <laughs> you know, we don't let anything stop us. And, um, you know, thank you, you know, not only for spending time today, but, but for all you do for, for Habitat and for Orange County as an Orange County native, uh, very, very glad that we've got uh, guys like you out there uh, doing their part, making, making the world a better place. So I think with that, we'll say farewell and we will continue with the building dreams drive throughout the day. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Wing. Have a fantastic day, both of you. And we'll talk again soon. Join us. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>